parties, alcohol, outings. That's the summary of my life for the last years. But I found a solution, or rather, the solution met me at a drinking spot. I am a Kume, and I would like to share my story with you. Before we continue with the story, do not forget to click on the notification button in order to get notified at every new video posted. And if you've been touched by the story, do not forget to click on our PayPal link in order to help us touch more souls. May God bless you. I have lived a promiscuous life for long, and my life was only about outings in nightclubs, taking alcohol and dating beautiful girls. Or just dating girls because I really did not have a preference. All that mattered to me was to satisfy my needs. Yet I was from a very respectable home. My parents did their best to give us the best education to my brothers and I. But you know, they often say in a set there is always a bad seed. And I think, yet I believe. I was rather convinced that I was the family's bad seed. That is how I will justify my misconduct. The others had really made it in life, and they were my parents' pride. I didn't deem it necessary to make extra efforts since they had already made it. Alan, you will soon be turning 30, and you still haven't done anything with your life? My dad said one evening when I was returning from my joy rides with my friends, and of course, I was drunk. You still live with us, your parents, and you seem not to be bothered about it. But you know you won't remain a child forever, right? Again, my son, you are getting on and you should think of starting a life. You have your own family and free us from this burden, this embarrassment. You have become my friend's sole topic of discussion and during our meetings, I am never in the best of position to make suggestions, talk less of giving advices, but they will always remind me about you, your education, and they will say I didn't succeed in raising you properly. So my brain was a bit scattered, but I perfectly had understood my father's words. But to me, there were music in my ears, like a disc which kept playing the same song as before. I know that I'm useless and a nuisance to you, a cause of shame and indignation. But there is one thing which you have to understand from this, and that is no matter what you do, you should try to do it the best way. And that is the reason why I'm working towards becoming the best bad guy you may know. Dad, everyone has a calling in life, right? My father almost had thrown a fit, but my mother came to the rescue and took me to the bedroom. It was now one of her chores. You know I love you, right? Mom said after helping me clean up. After everything, I love you, my son, and I would tell you again and again until you realize that you are better than this. I know you, my son. My little Ekume, he's a big man. He's intelligent and loving. I gave you life and I know you better than anyone. I pray I will continue to pray for you because I believe that you will change. There we go again. The same topic, I told myself. My mom was always coming back to this issue of God and prayers. But I was 28 years old, man. And I remember that in our childhood, she carried us around the church and sometimes by force. I must say that it brainwashed my brothers and sisters because they strongly believed in God. And it was just normal given that everything was moving well for them. As for me, I had always been remains and nothing else. It was the God of my family, not mine, as I said. My mom, I know you love me. I know you will do everything for me. I don't doubt it. I am grateful, but please, don't come telling me God has done this or that. I don't think he's interested in me. I feel like I don't exist for him. My mother looked at me. Her eyes were teary. She didn't really know what to say. I really feel bad seeing her in that state because she was the only person in the world who saw value in me. My brothers and sisters were literally ashamed of me and they didn't dare to introduce me in public as one of them. Mom talked a lot about it but nothing changed. I really had to change and it would have been to please her. This woman had always believed in me. Believe me, I was trying and it was more and more difficult each time. I see a bottle of alcohol and I forgot all my commitments and go back to my old habits. My people considered me as some sort of drunkard. I knew that they didn't really love me and the height of it was the day I found out from some family acquaintances that my younger sister was getting married and I had not been invited. I was bold enough and I walked in when the marriage ceremony was going on with a bottle of alcohol and I spoke and said, <clears throat> I don't mean to be arrogant, but I would rather prefer not to know this God that you speak a lot about. Is this how it teaches you how to be scornful? 
You know, I don't know much about the Bible like you do. I don't quote tons of verses like you, but at least I know that Jesus told his disciples one commandment, which is to love one another and to forgive. But ladies and gentlemen, the disciples of Christ, you do the opposite. I think he is very angry when he sees you. You don't even take care of your own and yet you claim to have faith. I have a task for you. Go read Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 and come tell me. I left after saying that and I didn't really care about what my family would say or think. Talk less of the guests. I was already used to all of that. I didn't come back home the following days. I was sleeping in the street corners. I felt much more at home than at my actual home. There is no way I would go back to those hypocrites. That's how I described all of them and of course except my mom. One day, I was seated in the bar while enjoying my favorite drink. I saw a beautiful young lady seated in the corner. She was all alone. It seemed she was waiting for somebody. I gathered all my courage and adjusted my twisted dresses before walking up to her. Good evening, madam. Can I keep you company? I asked to my greatest surprise she quickly accepted. Of course, I made advances to her by singing all of the beautiful serenades that I knew. She looked at me. It seemed she was trying to examine me to understand me. I was afraid of what she was going to say. Where is your soul? She asked me. I must confess, I was completely lost. How come my soul? I don't know, but my heart beats normally in my chest. You need your soul back because from what I see, it's very far away from you. But then, I love you very, very much. You seem to be a nice girl. I am not in a haste, so I am inviting you to one of our conference this weekend. She directed the place and I didn't know why. Without a second thought, I went there. And that's where I discovered the theme of the conference, which was make peace within oneself and with God. The beautiful stranger personally came to welcome me. Despite the protocol members who were present and offered me to sit around the VIP section, I looked so unkept. I was so moved that the first time that I was given honors during such events, I had no option than to remain there. During the conference, I felt like I was alone in this world, as if I was having an interview with God, and as if He finally decided to talk to me and provide answers to my questions. Because each time a question would come to my mind, that was already an answer. It was just amazing. After the conference, I had time to discuss better with Miss Mercy and I even decided on my own free time to come back and listen to the teachings. We had time to discuss and I felt more and more at peace with myself and especially useful. But discovering who I was and what I represented in God's eyes, I became someone else. I needed to make peace with my family, so I invited them for a meeting and I spoke. You know my life has been a constant battle with myself. I never saw myself at your level, reason being that I chose another solution, promiscuity. But today everything is different and I understood that I will no longer define myself based on you but according to what God himself will say about me. Also I beg you all to forgive me for all the trouble I have caused you so far. Mom, I hope to return the love that you have always shown me so far because you always believed in me. Today I am working towards finding my way in the society while being connected to God. I assist Miss Mercy in her conferences and I will soon be giving organizing conferences too. But I need to learn it with God's help.